So, here's the neck once it's been shaped. you can see that well enough. Okay, a few details about it. Um, I shaped it with a belt sander and a disc sander, a chisel and a wood rasp. Uh, you'll notice there's an angle to the neck. Um, the angle really is the thickness of one of the pieces of timber that we used. Uh, I took that down with a chisel first, then a belt sander. And looking at this side of the neck, I, could a slot going down there to make that an even thickness, took it out with a chisel both sides and then rounded it off on a belt sander. Um, this distance between here and here, the last fret, is 16.6 .6 centimeters. I've allowed about 50 millimeters here for this. And this is pretty random really, it just what seemed to fit and be nice. Um, pretty much guesstimate. Uh, I took it off down a bit so that when I start pressing the strings, I don't have a problem with it hitting the timber further down. Uh, the reason it's like this is so that this will actually fit to the body of the banjo. But um, essentially that's it. Uh, I fretted it with um, copper, 2.5 millimeters cross-sectional area it's used for socket ring names and again you can get a, a roll of it from pretty much anywhere really be in Q, Home Base, Home Depot, Electrical Store I did think about using fret wire but it didn't really seem to be in the spirit of what we're doing so I chopped up some copper sawed some slots for the frets bit of super glue and then squeezed those in with the cramp uh, and it seems to have held quite well. Then I dressed it down with a file along the edges here. It's probably still a bit uneven along the top here, so when the glue's had a chance to dry, what I'll probably do is dress it level with a file to make sure that they're all pretty much level with each other. The nut here, it's a bit of four millimeter fiberglass that I happen to have. So I, again, I could have slot with a um, hacksaw in this case, put a slot with the hacksaw, bit of super glue in there, squeezed that in and filed the string slots in so the strings have a place to rest. This we made in a previous video, it's the top end of the string retainer um, and it's screwed with the three screws there where we made the holes and glued down and obviously the strings will go along here and into here be tightened up and that should hold it. So that's the, the finished neck. And as you can see, it's all finished up. And again, this is made out of oak because um, oak is what I could get my hands on. Um, these floorboards come in a, a huge variety. I mean, you know, you can pretty much choose the wood you want to choose. Uh, you could, I guess, do it in a couple of different colours. So do a lighter backing to it and then put a fingerboard of, say, a cherry, something like that. Really, sky's the limit, just, just what you want to do. I put a bit of tea coil on it afterwards, just to make it look pretty and shiny. Uh, and that's the main component of the neck. So at this stage, we've um, got the major component. We've also got our string tensioning device, our tuning head from an earlier video. And um, I was in the pound store and I saw this which I think is pretty brilliant really it's a six inch cake tin and I'm going to use it for the body of the banjo and it's going to be obviously in that case an open back banjo and significant thing there is it says we have to drill any holes or cut any sounding holes in the, in the top here and obviously not a good idea really to have sharp bits of tin that you're mucking about with so this had pretty much nothing to do with that it's pretty much done. So the next video we're putting all this together and essentially let's put that on there and that on there. And that's what we're looking at pretty much. So I'll be fixing all those together making a bridge and stringing it up and the banjo ukulele will be done. Any questions just leave me a comment and I'll try to answer them. 
and I'll get the next video done as soon as I can. Thank you very much.